This past weekend, everyone in the country celebrated Mother's Day and the New York Times published a column written by Elizabeth Brunig about her experience with motherhood. She actually kind of broke the ongoing trend of women waiting until they're in their 30s to have children. She wrote that I became a mother at 25 and I'm not sorry I didn't wait. And what ensued was a weird level of outrage that I really did not expect. But if you follow any of Liz Brunig's work or follow her on Twitter, for instance, she tends to get under the skin of blue check mark liberals on Twitter. Like it's a very common thing. It's happened in many different contexts. So once you kind of get a sense of that, then you'll understand why they needlessly were up in arms over this column that's just about her lived experience. That's all this is about, right? And I actually think that she did a good job in um, you know, just giving a perspective that is important. As a woman myself who has decided not to have children, my decisions have been informed by the various stories that I've read by women who have either made the decision to have kids or decided not to have kids. I love this topic and I love the various perspectives that people put into the conversation. Now with that said, you know, she not only talks about her experience becoming a mother at 25, she also makes sure, and this is important, to explain why it is that so many women wait such a long time these days to have children. So she says that young people are hesitant to start their families because of legitimate worries about money and stability, along with a variety of cultural concerns that were their baby boomer parents honest, they would admit issued from their own design. So she talks about the economic concerns that millennial women are facing. I thought the piece was fine. And as a woman who's decided not to have kids, I wasn't offended by it at all, not even a little bit. I read the piece last night, went to sleep, didn't think about it again. Until this morning when people like Amanda Marcotte, a self declared feminist who makes money doing her feminist writing, decided to attack Liz Brunig. First by admitting that she didn't even bother to read the piece. She says that, here, I'm gonna actually pull up her tweets because she says, I would like to thank this headline byline combo for helping me set a record for the quickest gross pass I've ever uttered in my life. The funniest part is framing 25 like it's some daringly young age. The average age of first childbirth is 26. Yeah, but we all know what the ongoing trend is. Like she's acting as if she doesn't know that more and more women are putting off having children or just deciding not to have children at all. Because in the United States, there is no safety net, there is no protection, there's no support for women by the US government. In fact, it's it's insane that it's still in a debate right now as to whether or not people should get mandatory paid family leave. It's not a federally mandated thing right now, and she knows that. Marcotte also writes this, if you want to, if you want to take on this issue that is smart and isn't naked pandering to the fantasies of pathetic men, what? I recommend blah, blah, blah. Okay, nothing in this piece, nothing in it pandered to pathetic men. This was a story, a column written by a woman who wanted to share her perspective and her lived experience as a young mother. The fact that these self like described feminists are so vicious toward her in dismissing her lived experience tells you everything you need to know about this current climate of weaponized identity. It's disgusting. Okay, so this has two different issues here. First of all, I read the op-ed after I saw the vitriol against it. I was like, oh my God, what does she write? I'm curious to see. Oh My God, it's the most inoffensive article I've ever read in my entire life. I was trying, trying, trying to figure out what they're mad about. I couldn't even figure it out, right? And that's because I'm a vile man who wants to force women to, I don't know, is that the argument? I have no idea what the argument is. Who wants to force women to have birth at 25? Why the hell would I would do that? I got married at 38. My wife was much older than that, than 25 when we got married and much older than that when she had kids. What? Why would, I don't get it. All right, so that leads to what's going on with the Amanda Marcotte and Jill Filipoviches of the world. I don't know. So there's two things. Now you said, look, they they get paid to write feminist stuff. That's there's nothing wrong with that. And and feminists we love also get paid to write. There's nothing wrong with no, that. No, no, no. There's no, but there's nothing wrong with that. 
it, it's it's how they make their money, but it's just interesting because as they make themselves the arbiter of what is acceptable in conversations pertaining to women, they then turn around and dismiss the lived experiences of women that they just don't agree with. The uh, hundred percent. So, and there's a couple of things that that it, from the outside seems to be problems. Okay. Well, anyways, so number one is. It's like an extreme form of cancel culture that turns off everyone. So we're feminists here and we fight for women's rights on every issue. And uh, and I would dare say as strong as anyone in the country. So whether it's wages, whether it's reproductive rights, you go back and look at our clips on, on what we've said. Uh, I don't think anyone's ever come as close to being honestly as vitriolic as we are in defending women's rights. And we call out those uh, right wingers and they're trying to grab women's bodies and telling us they're for freedom as they do those ultrasounds and so I wouldn't go on and on and on, right? And by the way, a lot of these corporatists were secretly trying to protect the Hyde Amendment as we were fighting ferociously against the Hyde Amendment, right? But there is but you don't do the feminist cause any good in my opinion, everybody's different. You want to have your opinion? It's a free country, of course, right? By going and saying, how dare you defend having kids at 25? You're terrible. We People don't even know what the hell you're criticizing. It makes you look ridiculous. And unfortunately, by extension, it makes the feminist movement look ridiculous. Yeah. Because people can't figure out what you're mad at. It's so absurd. You're over the top absurd. And part of the reason is they're trying to outdo one another. Oh yeah, I'll be even more absurd in my critique of XYZ. And you're not feminist enough, I'm the biggest feminist of all. First of all, fight for women's rights in a way that actually challenges power. And maybe I'll believe you instead of trying to, and this is, I hate the, the right wing term, but this is unfortunately a good example of it. Virtue signal on Twitter mm -hmm. that you're the uber feminist. Yeah, right? exactly. Okay, but, but the second part of it is both of those folks, that that are happen to be in this story, also are weirdly corporate Democrat defenders. Mm, strange. I I wonder if that in any way plays a role in their decision to be so vicious to Liz Brunig, who is a socialist, whose husband is also a socialist, who. Uh, they're both incredibly strong supporters of Bernie Sanders. I mean, I've seen the vitriol directed toward Elizabeth Brunig for years now. So I wasn't really surprised that she was met with this kind of um, uh, response. But I wanna give you one more example, okay? Because this was the one that stood out to me the most in just how vicious and disgusting it is. So Jude Ellison S. Doyle on Twitter wrote this. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing this woman, talking about Liz Brunig, it was a tremendous personal achievement to be repeatedly knocked up by an internet troll she met in high school. She married her high school sweetheart, Matt Brunick. No. They have two children together. And that's your that's your expert commentary on this. That's your smart analysis and opinion. That's how you decided to weigh in on this. Look, you corporate frauds, get out of our lives, okay? So we hate the right wing for being in our lives and telling us what we can and can't do with our bodies. No, you can't smoke pot, no, you have to have the baby. No, we're gonna do a, a vaginal ultrasound and, and basically medically rape you through the government. We hate that, we hate that, get out of our lives, right? And these people come in, you married the wrong person, okay? I don't like your husband. Okay, and I don't like that he knocked you up, and I think you're evil and he's evil, and I'm gonna judge, judge, judge. I didn't wanna have a baby, so you shouldn't wanna have a baby. I'm pro choice. It doesn't sound like you're pro choice. It sounds like you want us, it sounds like you're a Tucker Carlson caricature. What are you, are you gonna also make us drink coffee every day? Like you're the <laughs> caricature of what the right wing thinks an idiot lefty is, right? And so, all right, look, you, you can't tell us that you're the biggest, baddest feminist in the world. And then when you have candidates that are better on women's rights, you yell at them and you attack them in favor of corporate candidates like Hillary Clinton, who 
She's not bad on women's rights, the fair is fair, right? I mean, I think but she's bad on women's rights when she didn't want to increase the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour. And when you look at, look, let's talk about what women's rights really is, right? It's more than just like the superficial, shallow, like use this word because it's more respectful. Use that word because it's more respectful. I don't care about words. What I care about is policy that materially improves the lives of everyone, including women. $15 an hour minimum wage. You know who that would overwhelmingly help? Black women who are overrepresented in minimum wage jobs in the United States. That is a feminist take that I can get behind. But the kind of like finger wagging that you get from clowns like Amanda Marcotte, not interested. That's not feminism. It, it's a grift and it's gross, toxic, and it divides people. Look, she knows it. The reason why I think some people react as Anna do, does and say the word grift. Is because it gets suspicious when every candidate you defend is a corporate Democrat. And every time they have an issue where they're doing something toxic, you step in and call people sexist. So Janet Yellen, she took millions of dollars from the bank she's supposed to regulate in speeches. You can't say that you're sexist. Here comes the same yep. corporate feminist. Yep. And oh, I use identity politics not to actually help women with women's rights, but to protect to be a Praetorian guard around corporate candidates and to call everyone sexist and to play identity politics. Well, I look, that you went too far here. There's nothing to criticize in this article and you're being absolutely absurd. And I want everybody to understand, they are not us, okay? So everybody's free to have their own opinion and maybe it has nothing to do, they just coincidentally just love corporate Democrats and think their policies are better for women, that is indefensible, okay? But maybe they think that and that's it's a free country. But I don't want people thinking that all progressives think you're not allowed to disagree with anyone else and that we're gonna regulate your personal choices in your life. It is the opposite of being a progressive. You want to be some sort of weirdo Victorian judgmental, you know, zealots that try to tell women what to do with their lives, ironically, that's up to you, but it's not very feminist. And you know what they'll respond to this? Guaranteed. I can tell you ahead of time what the tweet is. How dare Jake Uger even speak about this? Sexist because he criticized me. I'm a woman. I'm shielded. From any criticism, uh, and and so I don't yep. care what you think. So I think this, you think that, and no, you're not allowed to cancel me or or say that I can't have this opinion. You can critique me all day long. Have at it, Hoss. Go nuts on Twitter. Oh, Jake Uger cannot say this. I've heard it a million times before. I'll hear it a million times again. I don't care. We disagree, we disagree, and I'm not gonna listen to your BS identity politics. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air, so all that all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.